last time we talked about the, all the high technology. And then last 40 years, it's just amazing. Okay, just amazing. The whole world just completely changed because of the technology development. And then the reason, the foundation for all the technology development is the electronic technology. Electronic technology basically make everything possible. When you're talking about the microprocessor, that's electronic technology. When you're talking about GPS, that's electronic technology. When you're talking about all the camera, behind the camera, it's all electronic technology. And the reason electronic technology can make so much difference is because integrated circuit technology. Integrated circuit technology can shrink and shrink and shrink. So the same kind of function, like I show the screen here, used to be a huge big box of the television. Now, it's the nice big flat panel TV and the resolution is 100,000 times better. Price is even much cheaper. So that's what happened to the electronic technology. That's what happened to the integrated circuit technology. Now everybody, I think, probably heard a lot of the story lately about the chief four strategy from the United States. And everybody watched the battle between the Ukraine and the Russia. And you can see how the technology played in the latest uh, war. Okay. They can fire the missile 100 kilometers away and fall in the accuracy within one meter. And that's just beyond imagination. But however, that is what all the electronic technology can do. And that's what actually what the electric engineer does. Okay, electric engineers keep doing a lot of the fundamental things, okay. Like I told you last time, this is just say it's an iPhone. Then you open the iPhone, what's in there? A lot of this kind of integrated circuit and all the other component, we call it discrete component. Like this kind of integrated circuit, many of them had like hundreds of million component in there. Now that's a lot of component. Now how did you make it happen? And that's what the electric engineer does. How do we make it happen? From very fundamental basic, understanding what we need. And just like you build a huge mansion, say 20,000 square foot mansion, how do you do it? You build up brick by brick, piece of wood by piece of wood, step by step. And that's the way you build it. So how do you build a big mansion? You always start a architect come up with an idea and draw all the line, blue line, uh, draw all the architecture, okay, draw all the blueprint. <coughs> what need to be built, what need to be designed, where is that going to be? And that's exactly what's going on in the electronic technology. You want to build some function like iPhone, you come with a block diagram first, functional block diagram. What need to be in this iPhone? And what are the functions? Like I told you before, okay, if I want to, I, if I want a phone, I can talk to somebody 100 miles away. Okay, I need a communication. And this is called RF communication. And if I want to talk to the computer in my house, then I need a Wi Fi Bluetooth. Then if I want to have a GPS, then I need to have a GPS communication. And the latest iPhone actually have a satellite communication. So just in case you're lost in the mountain, you can turn on this SOS capability, talk to the satellite. The satellite is going to collect your information and then send to the rescue team to go to rescue you. Okay, so this is keep improving. But however, understand what the function you need is very important. Just like when you build a mansion, 
what are all the functions you need in the mansion? You need an indoor swimming pool. You need a huge dining room. You need a nice bedroom. Everything. <clears throat> so you always start with uh, you can call it imagination or dream. Just like the iPhone. Originally, just a phone. But then actually today, it's a portable computer. Got everything in it. So once you have this, uh, understand what the function you want in this system, then you need to divide it into detail now. Okay, how do I make this function happen? This gives you a very basic understanding, say, like a GSM radio subsystem. This is next level block diagram of GSM radio subsystem. So you have the radio frequency signal coming in, and they have a radio frequency signal going out because you have the transmitter signal out. Now, how do they do this uh, RF signal processing? Then how do they coding, decoding? There's a lot of this called the communication theory. So as an electric, electric engineer, you must be pretty good at mathematics. And you have to be really good at the science, physics. And you have to be really good at making things happen. <clears throat> That's what we call engineering. Okay, so you can hands-on, understand all the detail, and you can make things happen. So actually, I think good engineer should have a lot of experience building up stuff. Okay, like in the in the school, you have a, a lot of project. You need to get hands on it, how to put them together in a nice uh, final form. Uh, you don't want to be messy, and you don't want to be crappy. Everything has to be solid, put together, uh, in a very good planning. So this is what the electric engineers do, okay? So this is a good example of the... <coughs> I'm sorry, I just got the COVID-19, so you probably had to tolerate my coughing up and down. So then you can see the antenna, get a signal coming in. So this is just the beginning of radio frequency communication. Same thing for the GPS. You think about all this, uh, you know, the cruise missile. How can they be so accurate? Because they all have the radio frequency signal. GPS send the radio frequency signal. And then they have the coordinate of the target. So the GPS keeps sending the signal. They keep receiving a new position, new location until within a meter of the target. <coughs> they just hit it. Again, this is a lot of the RF communication going on. So as an electric engineer, this is actually what I did before too. How do you receive the signal <clears throat> from satellite? Then convert into the information inside your computer. Then you keep receiving it. Then you keep comparing the our final target. When the Location is getting closer and closer to your final target, and you drop down. And this is how it works. So electric engineer had to figure out, how do I receive all the satellite signal? Now, of course, even harder is how do I come up with the architecture of this whole system? I got a satellite, <clears throat> many satellite. Okay, then I got a, a different frequency signal, I receive signal, how do I process signal, everything. So this is all electronics. It's all integrated circuit. <clears throat> and this is example, we'll go to the very detail, very fundamental now. Remember our region, we want to do the GSM radio subsystem so I can make an iPhone. Now I have this called the radio frequency subsystem here, GSM. Now let's go to the next level. So what is in this LNA? We call the low noise amplifier. So that means, okay, we receive the signal coming in. 
then it goes through all the signal processing and let go the signal coming out. So what is what do we process signal? The electronic engineer does is to receive the signal from everywhere, okay, and convert into some function you and me can enjoy it. Okay, so that's what engineer does. Receive the signal from outside world. I process it and then I'll put it, give to human being again so they can enjoy it. Like our signal, I receive it, I process it, and I get output to it. I receive signal, I just, eventually I get the audio signal coming out of the RF signal because that's where this information is stored in the RF system. So this is actually the first stage when the RF signal coming in. I need to amplify it. Because when you receive the RF signal from a field like a hundred kilometer away, that signal is extremely small, extremely small. It's probably 10 minus A or 10 minus 10 volt level. And nobody can feel it, nobody can hear it, nothing can happen. But however, with the electronic engineer, they can come up with a device, come up with a circuit, come up with a capability to receive that signal. They amplify it. Suddenly, very small signal become a much bigger signal. I can do something with it. <clears throat> That's what is called the signal processing. So this is the very front end of the electronic engine. It's the very front end of the GPS system. This is the very front end of the all the you know G4, 4G, 5G, iPhone system. Very front end of the Wi-Fi system, very front end of the Bluetooth system. So everything, like the same thing, telecommunication from the optical link, Starlink, everything start from here. So we call the RF signal processing. Now, let me tell you what kind of elect uh, electric engineer job we have, okay? <coughs> the first thing I have to tell you, electronic engineer, if you have the capability and passion, electronic engineer usually is one of the best paid jobs because they need a different kind of requirement and they need a different kind of brain power, and they need the people work hard, have a good science background, good math background, good hands-on capability, good analysis capability, <clears throat> logical thinking, creativity. So electronic engineer usually is one of the best paid. Then also in the future, electronic engineer will be still the foundation for all the technology evolution. Give you an example like the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence means a lot of the signal, pattern recognition, all this. I still count as a part of electronic engineer. The reason is you still need to know a lot of electronic background and you still need to know all the science, mathematics, everything. So in the future, Artificial intelligence is going to be very, very, very popular, basic part of life. Give you an example, 20 years later, maybe even earlier than that, nobody will need a car. Nobody will need a car and the garage. So all you need to do is just use a phone and call a Tesla and the Tesla will come in front of your house and take you to wherever you want to go. Then after you get there, you call Tesla to come home. Then between that, Tesla just drive all around the places. <coughs> like one city, if you have like 200,000 people, they probably have a 50,000 Tesla. 
and then park in the public like Tesla parking lot. It's just running around all over the place. All you see is Tesla. And you don't have to buy a car. And you don't have to build a house with garage because they have enough Tesla for everybody at any time. So this is what's gonna happen 20 years later. That everything's electronic, everything's automatic. All the cars have no power in there, no driver in there. So all you need just use a phone to call the car here. I take you to wherever you wanna go and you wanna uh, share the car, everybody can share the car. So everything's like that. So the car can be a small bus, uh, a lot of shared, uh, shared drive. So everything will be just like that. And behold, however, that's all because electronic engineer did a lot of good work to make the artificial intelligence can happen. But I'm happy because when I'm getting older, I cannot drive. I'm very happy because I can always have a car, even nice and better than I have now. <clears throat> so I'll talk about electronic engineer. The first thing is that Category I call hardware design engineer. Now inside of uh, hardware design engineer, they have a different category. Okay, like a project leader and top level system architect, sub block system architect, individual functional design engineer, and the system design engineer. <clears throat> project leader, of course, very simple. Like I told you, it's the iPhone. They say, okay, I'm the project leader of the iPhone. So what I need about this phone, what I need for the iPhone 16. So you just have to come up with all the market inputs. What are the unique functions? It is needed different from other phone. So that's where you have to do it. <clears throat> Under just like architect of the house, you have to know what the house needed for your customer so you can sell the house. Same thing for the iPhone 16 project leader. Okay, so they are architect. Then top level system architect. So you need to break down the iPhone into all this block diagram. This is called a top level system architecture. Just like the architecture needs to draw the house. Say, okay, I need a six bedroom. I need a five and a half. Uh, bathroom, uh, I need a three living area, I need a one study room. It's the same thing, exactly the same concept. So top level system architect. <clears throat> they, they come up with top level functional block diagram. Then sub block system architect. Remember we're talking about RF communication system, sound system, Wi-Fi system, charger system, Application processor system, USB Bluetooth video system, firmware development, power supply distribution system. So think about the. I didn't really go through all the detail, but however, <clears throat> what I just mentioned in that subsystem block, it's pretty much right here. You have a battery, you have power supply subsystem. You have a microphone, this is an audio system. You have a keyboard, then you have a video system, you have an RF system, you have an application processor, everything right here. IO, USB interface, and you can hook up to the external device. <clears throat> this is sub, sub block system architect. So every sub block system architect had to break their function into more detail. So the bottom level design engineer can make it happen. Then you have an individual functional design engineer. So you have the IFLA design engineer, stereo audio design engineer, LCD display, AMOLED, everything. So you can see pretty much like a four level of uh, hierarchy. <coughs> This hierarchy concept is very important. So in order to make a project work, everything had to be organized. You cannot put all the circuit in flat level. Okay, when we mean the organized, 
you probably immediately think of the organ, this word, Lara, organ, inside our body. So God create us in a very organized way. So we have a lung, we have the heart, we have a kidney, and we have a liver. Everyone has its own function, but everyone works with the others in a very coordinated way. So same thing for the hardware design engineer. You got to break your whole system into different level. At every level, I have a different expert to take care of it. Different expert with different expertise to take care of it. Then the interface between all the uh, blocks had to be well defined, well described, so there's no mistake made. Okay, so this is what's going on. I give you an example like what we're talking about here. All the interface, I think we will define what are the signal coming in and what are the signal going out. And this had to be done. Just same thing like the architect design a house. You have a hallway, you have a bathroom, and you have a living area, you have a kitchen. How you're going to interface together? So you can have open area, you have a closed area. So all the interface need to be well defined. <clears throat> so this is hardware design. Then you have a digital design engineer and software development. So this is called application process design. Application process, I think you heard about it. If you're familiar with iPhone, this is called the A5, A6, because Apple have their own pro uh, application processor. And Intel, of course, have their own microprocessor. The AMD had their microprocessor, and NVIDIA had their graph signal processor. So these are the brain power of the whole device. <clears throat> so application process is design engineer. This needs a huge computer background, a lot of knowledge in digital signal process, a lot of knowledge on digital design. But this is called application process design engineer. I think in high school, they probably already start teaching you some about digital design and computer design. <clears throat> then after you design the microprocessor, then you can write the software and the firmware into the microprocessor, do whatever you want to do. So then you have the firmware development. So in charge of architecture, flow of firmware for functions such as USB interface, operating system, Apple Watch interface. So all this actually is controlled by the software, firmware. Then of course, everybody has the APP, they understand APP. So you can develop application software. And this is a little bit away from the electronic engineer requirement because this is more like a consumer software application. It's more computer related now. So you can develop all kinds of APP to work with iPhone 6. So this is called digital design engineer and software development. <clears throat> then you also have a production related engineer because every part like iPhone, for every of this integrated circuit, iPhone need to create about 200 million of it a year. That's a lot, a lot of device. However, 200 million of it, none of it can be bad. If you put in the phone, do you like to have a phone that doesn't work? Any of this, thousands of this IC or hundreds of this IC, if any one of them has one tiny defect, your phone is not going to work. And some of the IC has a million, hundred million devices in there. So we're talking about trillions of trillions of components. Signal interface can have a zero defect. Otherwise, you're not going to be happy with your phone that Apple is not going to be able to sell its phone. And then Apple is going to go bankrupt. So production-related engineer 
Their job is to make this hundreds, hundreds of millions and billions of components work perfectly. And that's why the production related engineer job. That's also an important part of electronic engineer. So you have a product project engineer to make sure the product goes through every step with good coordination, smooth transition. Because production, you have to produce 200 million of the same, same device every year. And without a mistake, that's not easy. And you have a test engineer. Every device, 200 million of them, you have to test them good before you ship it. And if it's a bad one, you reject it. Okay, so in charge of all hardware and software requirements to fully test each IC and PCB automatically. Then quality engineer, to make sure product has high quality by passing through all the required stress test, life tests. You don't like to have an iPhone. After three months, it doesn't work because it gets worn out. You don't want to have a car, electronic control. After a few years, it broke down. You don't like that. You want an iPhone, you can use it for 10 years. You want a car, you can use it for 20 years. Now who's going to guarantee all the quality and robustness, the quality engineer, testing engineer, product project engineer, they all need to work together. Of course, design engineer has to design it with a lot, a lot of margin. Okay, at any kind of temperature in the world, and it will go through all the life tests you will pass. So this was production related. So uh, I think I'll, I'll let the teacher Elan to comment at this point. I pretty much cover all the important part of the electronic engineering job. Wow, what a wonderful overview. And teacher Ming is uh, vice president of Texas Instrument. And some of our old timers know we have calculators produced by Texas Instrument. So I also did electrical engineering and material science. And I also did semiconductor. So I was uh, just checking where we are today in the leading technology. Right now, the gate width within the transistor, it's at seven nanometer. When I was doing semiconductor integrated circuit processing, I was doing mm -hmm. 500 nanometer back in the 90s. So it's really grown leaps and bounds. So it's very, very exciting to hear from teacher Ming sharing a big picture of the different components of how the chips are designed, processed, and produced, and now quality check. So thank you, Teacher Ming. And all of this is technology that God allow us to manage and ultimately all came from God's creation. Thank you, Teacher Ming. Yeah, it's, indeed, you have to know, human beings are smart, okay? It's no doubt about it are creative, no doubt about it. But however, you have to understand one thing. Brain is created by God. I told you before, the brain have a hundred billion neuron cells. as wired by God. Now actually, I'm pretty sure we all will find out, this is the book I'm working on. Our brain actually connected to the spiritual realm all the time. Mm. So God's power is communicating with us all the time. So for whoever, God give you the talent to do specific jobs, God will help you to make it happen. If only you live for his glory. And then you will be very happy that God actually work with you and make things happen. Now, this is why the Bible is saying everything God worked for the best of people who love him. So we are connecting to the spiritual realm all the time. So the, if we can really feel and understand how much power we receive from God to do the good things for the people and in God's kingdom, and you can really, really utilize your talent to do a lot of good things. Okay. 
So, so I'm curious among the young people, anyone interested in the field of electrical engineering mm -hmm. related to what teacher Ming is sharing? I would imagine should be quite a few. Yeah, maybe. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah. And feel free to ask teacher Ming if you have any question, because this is a fascinating field. I did this for decades and, and I was actually wearing the <clears throat> clean room outfit we call the bunny suit. Because as teacher Ming was saying, that you cannot have any defects. It's parts per million. So we have to go into a clean room. Any one of you heard of clean room? So we have all put on the, we call bunny suit, all cover up masks like we are doing in COVID, but the whole outfit so that we have to keep the environment super, super clean. Uh, I have to say the, Electronic engineer <clears throat> actually is very, very fitted for the female's profession. Okay, sometimes people think all oh, engineers, all male. That actually is not true because uh, it's very delicate and it's not like a, you need a lot of labor, strong force. It's a lot of brain power, a lot of the thorough thinking and the uh, very meticulous. So I think actually female is very good to be a good electronic engineer. Okay. So I think the whoever interested in making a difference to the human being and uh, trying to create a lot of amazing function by all this uh, scientific foundation, through all this scientific foundation, it's a really, really good job. Not to mention, of course, it paid very well. Okay, then at this moment, I don't think people work as hard as used to be now. We used to work like 50, 60 hours a week. Most of the professional engineers, I don't think work that hard now. But I know it's for the Apple computer, they work very hard because uh, they have to release one model every year. And you think about how much work it takes to do the job. Thousands of people, okay probably 5,000, 10,000 people involved in create one iPhone. And they had to do it in a year. Or well, actually they staggered it. So actually today now they're planning for the iPhone 16, iPhone 17, iPhone 18 now. Okay. So they have like four or five teams going on in parallel. But they had to be on schedule. iPhone presentations never miss their schedule. They always come in September, New phone system, new phone system. So this is what happened as an electronic engineer. And this is the environment, electronic engineer. You can see what happened here. <clears throat> and then I forgot about the, another important part of the so-called uh, customer service, a marketing engineer. So you have a strategic marketing engineer basically find customer need and understand market trend to come up with the winner product. They have application engineer, support customer on specific question about the product. They have a sales engineer, you build good customer relationship, sell them the product. So this all related to the people, but you have a good engineering background. So this combination of the people's relationship, communication skill, and engineering background. This is what it looked like in the integrated circuit. After you decap the plastic uh, model, okay, plastic mode there. Uh, let me show you. See, this is one of the integrated circuit. Okay, covered by all the, what do you call them, uh, chemical compound, okay. But if you remove this compound, this one looks like inside. You have the integrated circuit, and they have all the wire bonding to the external metal lead frame so you can put on the PCB. And this have a probably a few million devices in there, few million. And this probably had the like, I don't know, same thing anyway. So in the green circuit, they just make so many components. <clears throat> 
jamming the small area, and that's what really happened. So today the transistor gate is like a, they're working on the two nanometer, two nanometer. And I think everybody heard about the best is the Taiwan Semiconductor Company, TSMC. And the next one, Samsung and the Intel. Uh, it's no other one. Global funding is already very behind. So the top three is Samsung, Intel, and the TSMC. Then for the memory, I think everybody heard about the Micron technology and the Hynix, Samsung, everything like that. Okay, so anybody have a question? Whoever like to be in this amazing journey, okay, for the AI, it can never stop working on it. It can never get tired of working on it because always something happens new. Yeah. <clears throat> Any question? So some people are talking about the dust. Okay, think about this uh, in the process. Okay, in the process, the IC technology development. And because this, uh, this size is very small, every transistor is a three nanometer transistor. Okay. Of course, that feature size is extremely small. So during the process, every step of the process, if the one tiny particle come in, say the particle maybe is like a 20 nanometer particle, and this whole device is dead. This whole device is dead. So during the IC technology development, you cannot have one tiny dust fall on this process. They have a like a, for this integrated uh, circuit, they probably have like 200 process step. One step, put it in, another step, add your way, add it in. Take like a 200 process step to make these chips. In any steps, if you have a like a five nanometer or 10 nanometer particle in there, this device is dead. So in order to make this kind of IC, they have a different kind of requirement called the color Clean, clean room requirement, class one, class two, class 10, something like that. For two nanometer process, you just cannot have any particles bigger than one nanometer. So how do they remove all of the particle inside of air? I don't know. So this is not a totally different technology. This is what I call the IC technology development. So in degree circuit te uh, technology development, you have a process technology development engineer. It's a lot of chemical requirement, okay. Process integration engineer, how do you make all those 200 process together make a good IC? Process EU improvement engineer, you know, you have to make a, even this million and million devices in there, 200 process step. But however, when they reach the final step, they have to be almost 100% of the market. That's amazing work. Then process modeling engineer, production engineer. So the best, the best company, TSMC, is the best in the whole world. And they're the best here. Every step is perfect. Every step is perfect. <clears throat> so this is another group of the electronic engineer you can do. Uh, some of them have to do a lot of it, the chemical and material science. Okay, any question? Yeah, I, uh, Apple, I think it's, uh, I don't know, A16 or what. I believe they're using the three nanometer now. The latest are three nanometer in the TSMC.
if you're good at math, you're good at science, and you're good at building things, make things happen, I really recommend you to join this uh, technology revolution and carry the human being forward. And then in the future, nobody will drive the car. It's always uh, autopilot. It's always automatic. It's always give you every kind of service and you don't even need to worry about anything. Chemistry is very important part of the IC technology. Okay, because the uh, IC technology I see technology, like I say, it's actually it's processed through the silicon. So you have to put all the components inside of silicon, a uh, silicon, what do you call the, what do you call the foundation or something like that? Okay, wafer, we basically would call the wafer. So one piece of wafer. So you have to start processing it. How do you etch it? How do you deposit it? There's a lot of chemical requirement there. So the chemistry is very important part of the integrated circuit technology. So actually integrated circuit technology company hire a lot of the chemical engineer. Okay, but however, they become very specific now. Yes, chemistry is very important. All the science are very important. This is why engineer do that, right? Engineer put all the science together Make things happen. This is what engineer. So this is how God used engineering to change the world. Okay. Because God gave us the science. God gave us the nature. And give us the capability of science to find the nature. Then use the science to create a device as engineer does. Okay. So the high technology need all kind of scientific background. Yeah. Any other question? It's so much, so much to learn, okay? Because uh, like the silicon, how do you etch the silicon? Into a tiny two nanometer square, okay? And how do you deposit the electron into the tiny silicon area? Then how do you add the metal to it? How do you make the contact to it? So there's so much interesting in it. Of course, it takes a long time to learn, but however, it's fun. It's really, really fun. And not to mention, it pay very well. It pay very well. Okay, I think electronic engineer still is one of the best paid jobs. Chip, chip is the chip itself. It's just a definition of IC. This is called chips. Okay. This is called chips. Yeah, this. Center part of we call chips. Okay, basically it's just an integrated circuit. Okay, this is a chips. And it's just a started with a silicon, okay, foundry. So you make a pretty much just like a sand, okay. God gives us a lot of sand, so we can create a silicon wafer out of sand. We melt together sand and become a silicon. Okay, then we cut into small pieces. I will show you the later in the future. It's about the, if you look at the, they call the IC technology, you can find a lot of information. How do they make the integrated circuit? Okay. This is the chips. And these chips starting from uh, like a, let me look it up. Okay. Hold on. Uh, now, anyway, these chips, okay, is uh, say this one is a, Say so one centimeter by one centimeter. This probably is one centimeter by one centimeter. So this actually is part of a big, big wafer, okay? Big, big circular wafer. And they probably have like 3,000, 5,000 of this kind of chip in there. So they have to process this huge wafer with 3,000 or 5,000 just chipped in there. Then later they cut it out out of the, they cut it out, out of this wafer. And then they make the, this wafer to bond it into the lead frame. This is called lead frame. 
and put this lead frame on the PCB. Okay, so this is a chip. Chip is a part of the huge wafer. And uh, every wafer goes through the process of maybe 200 process step, chemical process step. You heat up, goes through the furnace, you do the eye implant, you do the chemical deposit, you etch everything, about 200 process steps. And you deposit the metal on top. Eventually, it comes out like this form. This is called one chips. Yeah. Hold on, okay. I think it's some um, question. Let me hold on, let me go to the question. Can the electric engineer make everything? Uh, I don't think anybody can make everything, but electronic engineer have so many different categories, Mara, I already told you. So they depend on your expertise and you do something different. So like uh, if you're RF engineer, uh, you do the radio frequency communication. If you're a microprocess engineer, you design the microprocessor. If you're audio the engineer, you design the audio system. Okay, if you're a memory design engineer, you design the memory. So if you're a video engineer, you design the video display, LCD display, and you design the television. So there's so many different kinds of categories. So the in big picture, yes, electric engineer make everything happen. But however, not every engineer can do a lot of things. Okay. Is there a future for semiconductor process engineering in the US? Yes, I think the Americans have a big strategy to bring the semiconductor process uh, manufacturing, actually called semiconductor manufacturing back to the United States. So they put a lot of money in there. I remember last time I heard it's about a $500 billion. Yeah, 500, yeah, I think $500 billion. Yeah, $500 billion for the semiconductor industry, subsidized semiconductor industry. Yeah, I think somebody made a comment and said, we had to get rid of the oxygen in sand so we can purify the carbon with a melted sand, a very high temperature. That's a very good comment. That's a very good comment. So Nathan, it's very good. Nathan loved this kind of stuff. Huh? So he's probably from uh, Silicon Valley. Yeah. That's what we call the pulling the crystal. Okay, pulling the silicon crystal out of the sand. Okay, they put the one very pure silicon on top. Then they put into the melted sand, they start pulling it, pulling it, pulling it. Then all the pure silicon follow it because the silicon structure connected with silicon. And then the hard part is a port. It's how do you pull the big, big rod of the silicon? Okay, where it used to be like a two inch, three inch, and now you're talking about 12 inches. 12 inches is very hard. Uh, I think the, the best company is still in Taiwan who pulled this, uh, created this pure silicon wafer. Yeah. You cannot have any impurity in there. A very good comment, Mason, a very good comment. So Nathan had a lot of this kind of background. 